So when I was a little baby, my mom took me to baby swimming. So they would just like float me a little bit in the water, uh, just to get to know the water and uh, to not be afraid of it. So that's when I started swimming. But uh, normally, when did you start the swimming? Uh, well, in Holland we have like uh, diplomas you can get for swimming. So you do your A, B and C. And after I finished my C, the local swim club asked me, uh, do you want to do a competition? So I, I did a small competition, it's not very special, but that's how I started. But you won it? Oh no, definitely not, no. When I was uh, 16, I won my first national championships. I won the 400 free. Uh, and that's when I started taking swimming more seriously. So I started doing more hours. And when I was 18 or 19, I finished third in the European juniors uh, in the 5K open water, so that's when I knew I, uh, I had something going. Uh, but when and why did you decide to be an open water swimmer? In 2010 I wanted to make European juniors in the pool, but I did not qualify. But I did pre-qualify for the open water. Uh, and then I kind of rolled into the entire open water swimming and I really liked it. Because it's much more than just <coughs> swimming your own race. Uh, it's a lot of strategy and uh, a lot of different races, like now it's sunny and it's hot. Last week in Setubal it was cold with a wetsuit. Uh, there's so many external factors that can change the race. Like some races you swim with 50 people, some with 80, some with 25. Uh, so there's so much different races, it's not just the same thing over and over again trying to perfect it. But. But as I heard, the uh, two Holland made a big impact to choose the open water swimming. Um, Martin van der Weyden and uh, Peter van der Hogenband, is it right? Yes, definitely. Uh, Martin, of course, has a really interesting story. Uh, it's really inspiring. He battled leukemia uh, and he won it. And after that, he started training again more seriously and uh, he qualified for the Olympics and won the gold medal at the first open water uh, Olympics. So that's really inspiring, of course. Um, and also Peter was one of the persons who inspired me to just swim in general. I mean, he's uh, kind of a legend in Holland. Uh, I mean, his times still are really fast. Uh, so, I mean, uh, that says something. Uh, when you look at his start and his turns, they're not impressive, but his swimming is really, really, really good. Probably it's a special uh, place uh, in your heart, I mean Balaton Furet. Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, it's a really beautiful lake here. It's a beautiful venue. Like I said yesterday, it is, uh, I think it's one of the World Cups with the best facilities. And it's really nice to be here. There's a lot of kind people. And of course, winning my first World Championships here really brings back a lot of good memories. So coming back here is uh, definitely special for me. How do you remember for that uh, World Championship? Uh, I remember it being kind of loaded, you know, getting in there. I was second in Kazan, uh, I was Olympic champion, so I really wanted to win. You know, that was the one thing missing from my, my list. Uh, so I really wanted to get it and I had a good plan, I had trained hard, so I knew it was possible. But like I said before, the open water is a lot of external factors, so the best doesn't always win um, but I really I had a really good race and I was in the right position at the right moment and I could really finish strong so it was, it was a really good race. But you won everything that you can so I mean uh, European Championships, uh, World Championships and Olympics so what's your aim there? Well my aim is there's never been an Olympic champion in the open water that defended this title uh, not with the girls, not with the guys, so it would be really cool to be the first. Plus, I just, I love swimming. I mean, I was after Rio, I'd, I was thinking, made my goal, I became Olympic champion. Should I quit just because I'm Olympic champion now, or should I just continue swimming because I love swimming? So that's what I decided, I, I really like swimming, so I just continued. But what do you like in swimming? Nobody likes to get up early every morning and uh, do two and a half hours swimming, swimming workouts. I love swimming in general, I love working towards the goal, I love the feeling in the water like you're completely free, you're doing your own thing, uh, just focusing on your body to, um, you know, to get that one thing that seems uh, 
unreachable for most. You know you can reach it only if you work hard for it. So. Last year in the European Championships, you beat Kristoff uh, in 10K. You are a big opponent with Kristoff, uh, but uh, you are a kind of kind of a friend, right? How can that be possible? Uh, on the land, we're definitely we're good friends. Uh, I really like seeing him. Uh, I mean, I like a lot of open water swimmers, but I think with Kristoff, we're it's one of my closer friends in the open water uh, the open water family. But in the water, it's just it's every man for himself. I mean, we're all training very hard for this. You know, I don't want him to feel bad, but I want me to win more. So uh, that's just how I look at it. I know he wants to win. He knows I want to win. Uh, and we just give it our best. And uh, I think that's the best way to go. He's definitely one of, one of the biggest opponents. Um, I mean, Balaton at the World Championships, he was fifth. Now he's won the 5K, the 25K, and he was second on the 10K at the Europeans. So he's definitely getting better and better. Um, but it's also like Jordan who finished first in Kazan at the World Championships and second behind me uh, here in Budapest is really one of the good ones. Uh, you've got Florian coming up now. I, I think he never won, uh, uh, never lost a 10K. So that's impressive. And you also have Gregorio Paltrinieri, who obviously is an uh, Olympic champion in the 1500. Uh, so there's a lot of good guys and Kristoff is definitely there with them. So Would you be nervous if Kristoff win the Olympics and uh, you're going to be the second? Uh, well, obviously I want to win, but if I have to lose to someone, uh, I would like it to be Kristoff. Okay, but after that, you will be the same friend? Of course, I mean, uh, unless he like pulls my leg or does something like cheating. But if he wins uh, fair and square, I mean, of course, we're just going to be friends. But you are a fair competitor. I think we have a sort of an unspoken rule in Holland, like you don't hit someone, but you can hit someone back. So if someone hits you, it's not like you're just going to have to let yourself get punched. You know, you have to make sure they know that like this is my space. It's okay if you swim over there, uh, but you don't, you don't get to walk over me. What's your hobby? Uh, I don't really have time for a hobby. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I train about 30 hours a week and I try to do uh, a bachelor in business administration. So I don't really have a lot of time left. But I like to just watch some TV series, uh, be with my friends. So you are thinking about uh, what's going to happen after when you finish uh, with the swimming, right? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, that's why I'm doing my schoolwork. Uh, just so I don't, I don't want to be just a swimmer the rest of my life. I also want to have options. Uh, maybe I'll become a swim coach, but I don't want to have to become a swim coach because I didn't do anything. As I saw on the social media, uh, you and uh, Ranomi is uh, a couple, right? Yeah. And we train in the same group. So we have a group of, I think, 16 swimmers. And we have three coaches, and so there's the open water part, it's just the four of us. And then she's like with the sprinters and the pool swimmers. Um, and I think twice a year we go in the same training camp. Um, and we have like the same training times, so we eat together every day. Um, uh, so that makes it easy. Um, but like now I, I don't see her for five and a half weeks, so that's, <laughs> that's really long. Uh, so that, I'd, well, I mean, we both know swimming is the most important thing in our lives and I think we can deal with it because we know how important it, it is. Uh, like if you would have a girlfriend who's not a professional athlete, um, she would just say, well, you can just skip this training just to be with me. It's only, it's only one training, but with us, you, you can never skip one training. So. I think it's it's nice to have someone who understands you, who understands your life. Uh, different topic, for example, in Glasgow and last year in Balaton Fred, um, you just showed how can you part, how can you uh, manage the, the partying and the swimming. Well, I think it's important to be able to let go, uh, and everybody has their own outlet. Uh, I really like to party every now and then. Uh, I don't do it very often. But when I do it, I like to do it well. Uh, just to also get it out of your system, like sort of. Uh, well, some people like to eat cake. 
or whatever, uh, collect cars, I don't know. Everybody has their own thing. Uh, and just when you're living such a strict life, like go to bed early, wake up early, uh, only eat the healthy things, all that. Um, I think it's nice for me to let go every now and then and just, you know, be young and uh, live a normal life. Because otherwise I don't think I would have been able to keep up this long. Uh, I'm training uh, full time now for almost 10 years, so I think it helps me to just, you know, uh, after a party just to go back to being serious and do the right things. Okay, but what, uh, what's your favorite drink? <laughs> of course it's Palinka. <laughs>